Greetings, friends around the world. This is Bible News Prophecy Program. My name is Alexander Sasha Velic. Welcome. Germany has crossed the red line as far as Russia is concerned. In September 12, 2022, Germany has crossed a red line with Russia by sending arms to Ukraine, Moscow's ambassador in Berlin said on uh, on that in that week. The decision undermined decades of reconciliation since the end of World War II and the Nazi invasion of the Soviet Union, the diplomat added. Quote, the very fact that the Ukrainian regime is being supplied with German-made lethal weapons, which are used not only against Russian military service members, but also the civilian population of Donbass, crosses the red line, Ambassador Segev Nachahev said in an interview with Izvestia newspaper. He added that Berlin should have known better, considering the moral and historical responsibility that Germany has before our people for the Nazi crimes. They have crossed the Rubicon, Nechaev stated, using an idiom for passing the point of no return. The German government, he added, has unilaterally acted to destroy bilateral relations with Russia that were unique in scale and depth and had been built over decades, the Russian ambassador noted. In essence, the post-war reconciliation of our nations and peoples is being eroded, Nechaev said. According to the diplomat, economic restrictions imposed on Russia over the Ukraine conflict have resulted in a sharp increase in utility bills, a surge in consumer prices, and a decrease in real incomes in Germany. Nechaev said the sanctions war against Moscow is being increasingly seen as shooting yourself in the foot in Germany, which has already faced protests over the cost of living crisis. The ambassador noted that Russia took no pleasure in seeing the damage, even if Berlin has itself to blame for it. Now, this was published on the Russia Today. Now, friends, while there are points of antagonism between Russia and Germany, there still is a need for Russian oil, fertilizer and grain. Furthermore, in the not-distant future, maybe within the next five years, we could expect that Russia will make a deal with the Europeans. This will be a deal that will coincide with the end to the Anglo-American world order. It will probably include Russia regaining at least parts of Alaska and some territory Canada currently rules. That said, Russia has not forgotten its debts from World War II. Russia will also not forget that Germany is currently supplying weapons to Ukraine. Although the Bible shows that a German-dominated Europe will become the power that pushes aside the Anglo-American world order, we have had the past couple of centuries the Bible also shows that Europe will face fear and destruction from Russia-led forces. So again, Although the Bible shows that a German-dominated Europe will become the power that pushes aside the Anglo-American world order we have had for the past, you know, couple of centuries, the Bible also shows that Europe itself will face fear and destruction from a Russia-led source. Now, here are some prophecies from the Bible. In the book of Daniel, chapter 11, we have a couple of verses that tell us of this future. Verse 11 uh, that's chapter 11, verses 44 and 45. But news from the east and the north shall trouble him, him, the future European leader. Therefore, he shall go out with a great fury to destroy and annihilate many. And he shall plant the tents of his palace between the seas and the glorious holy mountain. Yet he shall come to his end and no one will help him. This is also a prophecy, obviously, of the future coming uh, European dictator who is going to move his uh, seat uh, to the promised land, that is, to Jerusalem. Here is another prophecy from Jeremiah chapter 50, verses 41 through 43. Verse 41, Jeremiah 50. Behold, a people shall come from the north, and a great nation with and many kings shall be raised up from the ends of the earth. They shall hold the bow and the lance. They, sh they are cruel and shall not show mercy. Their voice shall roar like the sea. They shall ride on horses set in array like a man for the battle against you, O daughter of Babylon. 
The king of Babylon has heard the report about them, and his hands grow feeble. Anguish has taken hold of him, pangs of a woman in childbirth. Well, so does the European empire, here described in Jeremiah 50 as the daughter of Babylon, is to be destroyed by a northern, apparently Russian-led force, and probably one that cooperates with nations in the east, maybe Iran, and possibly the Ukraine. Ukraine will likely have some European cooperation, but because of prophecies related to groups like the Medes or Medes, it is more likely that it will be allied with Russia and not the Europeans in the end. Similarly, Belarus is a nation of those that primarily, primarily support the Russian Orthodox Church, whose patriarch Kirill is based out of Moscow. Since there are religious, cultural, military and economic ties between Russia and Belarus, Belarus will also seem to be a supporter of the end-time, apparently Russian-led confederation. Serbia, which has ties to part of Elam, as well as possibly the Medes, may also be a supporter. Consider also that the Serbian Orthodox Church still maintains ties with the Russian Orthodox Church. Notice that both Russia and Iran, one part of Elam below, are apparently going to terrorize, and this will seem to include the end-time Europeans. <laughs> so we are going to read this from uh, Jeremiah, the book of Jeremiah. And uh, uh, we have actually the prophecy in the book of Jeremiah related to this uh, uh, terrorizing Europeans, uh, chapter 51, verse 43. But this quote that I'm going to read to you now is from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 32, and verse 24 through 28. Ezekiel. Ezekiel, chapter 32, verse 24. There is Elam and her multitude all around her grave, all of them slain, fallen by the sword, who have gone down uncircumcised to the lower parts of the earth, who caused their terror in the land of the living, now they bear their shame with those who go down to the pit. They have set her bed in the midst of her of the slain, with all her multitude, with her graves all around it, all of them uncircumcised, slain by the sword. Though, though their terror was caused in the land of the living, yet they bear their shame with those who go down to the pit, it was put in the midst of the slain. Verse 26, there are Meshech and Tuval, and all of their multitudes with all their graves surrounded, all of the uncircumcised slain by the sword, though they caused their terror in the land of the living. They do not lie with the mighty who are fallen of the uncircumcised, who have gone down to hell with their weapons of war. They have laid their swords under their heads, but their iniquities will be on their bones because of the terror of the mighty in the land of the living. Yes, you shall be broken in the midst of the uncircumcised and lie down with slain by the sword. So Jeremiah chapter 50 verses 1 to 3 and Jeremiah 51 7 through 11 indicate that a northern nation or northern nations, as we see in Jeremiah 50, verse 9 and 41, those Ezekiel chapter 38, 39 refer, refers to those of the far north, on the, on the Scandinavia, Inuit areas or countries once in the old Soviet Union are the north of the king of the north. Well, those will destroy Babylon and could be in the forefront of what may be a nuclear attack on Rome itself. We derive this conclusion from Revelation 18, verse 9 and 10. And although many nations are north of Jerusalem, and most prophetic biblical directions seem to be centered in Jerusalem, it would seem that the expression far north is pointing to those that inhabit the northern extremes of Euro-Asia. The Scandinavian nations, such as Finland, would be expected to be hit quite hard, but so will much of end-time Europe. The fact that verses related to the destruction of the end-time Babylon mention the Medes in Jeremiah 51, 1 verse 11 and 28. This shows that the Medes must be associated with a northern power, which thus shows that the Russians are biblically considered to be Medes. Notice also the Bible shows Babylon tied together with birth pangs, pangs to a group from a far country and the Medes. We find that prophecy 
in Isaiah chapter 13, verse 1 through 8. Isaiah 13. Verse 1, the burden against Babylon with which I said the son of Amos shows. And he saw, lift up a banner on the high mountain, raise your voice to them, wave your hand that they may enter the gates of the nobles. I have commanded my sanctified ones, I have also called my mighty ones for my anger, those who rejoice in my exaltation, the noise of a multitude in the mountains like that of many people, a tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together, the Lord of hosts masters the army for battle, they come from a far country from the end of heaven, the Lord and his weapons of indignation to destroy the whole land. Wail, for the day of the Lord is at hand. It will come as destruction from the Almighty. Therefore all hands will be limp, every man's heart will melt, and they will be afraid. Pangs and sorrows will take hold of them. They will be in pain as a woman in childbirth. They will be amazed at one another. Their faces will be like flames." Then see verse 17 through 19. Behold, I'll stir up the meats against them who will not regard silver, and as of gold they will not delight in it. Also their bows will dash the young men to pieces, and they will have no pity on the fruit of the womb. Their eye will not spare children, and Babylon the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldeans' pride, <coughs> will be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. Well, thus both the accounts in Jeremiah and Isaiah, or Isaiah, seem related to the same invaders. This is referring to an end-time confederation that has a distance to travel, apparently a type of union of powers from the east, including Russia, who is also the major power of the far north. Furthermore, a far country also seems to be tied to the powers of the east elsewhere in Isaiah, chapter 46, verse 11, Calling a bird of prey from the east, the man who executes my counsel from a far country, indeed I've spoken it, I'll also bring it to pass, I've purposed it, I will also do it. Those called means are also, means are also shown to destroy the final Babylon according to both Isaiah and Jeremiah. Isaiah 13 verse 1, the burden against Babylon which Isaiah the son of Amos saw. Verse 17 through 19, behold I'll stir up the means against them who will not regard silver. And we all read it. And look at now Jeremiah 51 verse 11. Make the arrows bright. Gather the shields. The Lord has raised up the spirit of the kings of the Medes. For his plan is against Babylon to destroy it. Because it is the vengeance of the Lord. The vengeance for his temple. For the people, holy people, his temple. That uh, that these that these European neo-Nazis are going to destroy. By making the worldwide martyrdom of the saints. The fact that there are multiple kings of Medes indicates that multiple powers involved in this end-time confederation represent multiple governments, perhaps such as Russia, Belarus, Crimea, etc., etc. Roman Catholics may find it of interest to note that even among their scholars, it is taught that the Babylon of Jeremiah 51 verse 11 is referring to a European power, the Roman Empire. You find in Kurtz W, what does the Bible say about end time? A Catholic view, Nihil Obstat, Hilarion Kistner in Primature, published on July 19, 2004, Servant Books. Uh, year 2004, pages 48 and 49. Also, friends, please notice that the Bible clearly states there is a group from the far north in Ezekiel 38, verse 3 and 6, verses 14 and 15, and in Ezekiel 39, verses 1 and 2. A Russian confederation is the only place in on the planet that is in the far north and currently has massive military power. A northern confederation that appears to be led by Russia and probably includes the far north and far east Pacific coast portion of Asia, they will destroy the European Babylon, the one that is being formed before our very eyes. Well, for some more information on the news analysis, you can go to our website, www.biblenewsprophecy.net. My name is Alexander Sasha Vedic. This was Bible News Prophecy Program. Until next time, goodbye, friends.